Back with you live tonight on In Focus, and thanks for staying on. The Electoral Commission of South Africa says the EFF and Patriotic Alliance have taken a ward each from the ANC in Mpumalanga and the Northern Cape, respectively. Mpumalanga is an ANC stronghold by and large, uh, as shown by a fairly good success in the 2021 local government elections. However, the Red Berets have clinched Ward 13 of um, Sugaligwa local municipality with uh, the Patriotic Alliance claiming Ward 3 uh, of Kai Harib local municipality. Uh, and to help us make sense of all this, of course, the man who was always watching these numbers very carefully and giving analysis, Wayne Sussman. Good to have you and thank you very much for your time. Thank you. It's good to be here. Let's start in the Northern Cape. Very interesting. Ward 1, uh, Ward upon a Plattfontein in the Soi uh, municipality. PA there getting 53% from 25% uh, previously. ANC, 35%. Slight drop from 32%. A uh, uh, slight increase, actually, um, 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 I mean to say. It's the DA that has seen a drop from 25% to 7%. The EFF getting a percentage there, 2%. And we are seeing a new player coming in, Build One South Africa, getting a percentage and uh, uh, ACDP uh, dropping a percent there. What's the setting? Let's talk about that a little bit. Uh, it's in Kimberley. It's a vast area, provincial capital of the Northern Cape. Uh, what have been the dynamics that have been playing out? Sure. So this is the second by-election in this ward uh, in 2023, not even since 2021, but in 2023. And why are we having a by-election again? Because the ANC Council defected to the Patriotic Alliance. Right. And this is a significant result for the Patriotic Alliance because after the 2021 local government elections, the ANC won 33 out of 65 seats. And I know it's late and it's been a long day, but that gave them an outright majority. With the Patriotic Alliance winning the seat off the ANC, the ANC drops to 32 out of 65 seats. That means that the ANC no longer enjoys an outright majority in the largest, most populous municipality in the Northern Cape, Sol Plaiki, which is Kimberley. So how do the PA do this? They, the ward is interesting. Ruerapan is a lower middle class colored area of the ward. They ran up the numbers here, and they ran up the numbers because I started the interview by saying the ANC councillor walked over the t Patriotic Alliance. Right. Here the DA candidate who was on the ballot, so they, they were running to win the ward. What, when the nominations closed, they walked over to the Patriotic Alliance. So the DA effectively didn't contest the election. Oh. And the Patriotic Alliance benefits from that. It won over former independent voters, right. it energized its base, and has won its first ward uh, by-election in the Northern Cape. So it's a significant result for them. Yeah. The, the defection obviously not having quite a huge impact. I mean, uh, yes, it's a significant 35% uh, uh, is where the ANC is sitting. Uh, but by and large, this would be the result of the DA not participating. That was a major contributing factor, but you also have to give credit to the Patriotic Alliance. They uh, came third here the last time round, and they've won this ward now, and are a player in uh, certainly Sol Plaiki politics and Northern Cape politics. Yeah. And the ANC might need to go knocking on their door to remain in power. The ANC will either go to good or, the, in my opinion, the Patriotic Alliance, because they don't, no longer have an outright majority, and they need a coalition partner to govern this key municipality. Right. We are seeing the coming in of, of uh, Build One South Africa for the first time. Now, how did they do? They didn't do well. I was very surprised that this was the first uh, by-election they contested in South Africa. It was their debut. They only got 1%, uh, and they'd be disappointed. I don't know how that decision was made. And I think going forward, they'll need to choose their wards more selectively. Yeah. Does this in any way, of course, uh, indicate what would be the direction in this particular municipality, uh, maybe even in, 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 in the province, considering, of course, that uh, the DA is not going to make the same mistake again? And will they be able to get those voters back? Well, that remains to be seen. The Patriotic Alliance have a golden opportunity now to uh, govern and uh, ward one yeah. and show that they've done a... Because this ward historically has uh, swung between the ANC and the DA. And now is their golden opportunity to say, we can do a better job than the ANC 
and we can do a better job than the DA. And if they do that, Sol Plaik is a large municipality. The, they would hope that the PA Green Wave flows across Kimberley and indeed other parts of the Northern Cape. Yeah. So talk about Sol Plaik. What, what, if you're saying if they do well, what, what exactly are some of the challenges in this local municipality? The water challenges, I mean, this is the provincial capital of the Northern Cape, infrastructure challenges, there's uh, unemployment challenges, but I think getting the infrastructure challenges will be key for the new Patriotic Alliance councillor. Right. Let's turn now a little bit to Mpumalanga and, 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 and see what's, what's happening in, 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 in those uh, uh, by-elections where it seems the, the EFF has taken over some seats. This is a significant result because here there wasn't any candidate dropping out after the nomination disclosed. This was a, and this wasn't a competitive seat like Sol Plaiki. Yeah. This was a safe ANC seat. Uh, just to tell the viewers where uh, it's in the Musukalikwa municipality, north of Ermelo, the small coal mining town of Brayton. And here the EFF turns the tables in the ANC. They almost double their percentage support to get 60% of the vote. And if the EFF can do this in other parts of Mpumalanga, this is a great sign for them in the road to 2024. And just to remind the viewers, I was sitting in the hot seat two weeks ago. We reflected on the fact that the EFF had shocked the ANC in Makwasi Hills in the northwest. No one saw that coming. Yeah. So the EFF, if they are able to produce wild swings like this uh, in the small town of Brayton, in municipalities like Makwasi Hills, that's a very good sign for them on the road to 2024. What does this mean now in terms of the balance of, of, of seats there in, in that municipality? This is what makes the result even more astounding. It's a super safe ANC municipality. The ANC would have to lose a lot more by-elections to have their uh, governance of that municipality in question. They still have an outright majority. But interestingly enough, in a few weeks' time, we have another by-election in this municipality. And can the EFF do it again? Because if they can do it again, then the ANC will have some fear. Yeah. Losing some seats, but it has managed to, to retain some other seats as well. How significant is uh, other seats that they have uh, managed to retain, and what does it say? Great. When we look at by-elections, we look at the now. How does this affect the governance of municipalities, and how does it affect the road to 2024? In Sian Kuma, which is by the small town of Douglas, where the Orange and Vaal River meet, the confluence of the Vaal and Orange River, what happened there after the t local government elections in 2021, a 72-year-old farmer, uh, an independent, came together, the DA, the EFF, and the Freedom Front, and took power from the ANC. The EFF in the last few weeks have said, no, we want to work with the ANC in this municipality. But they couldn't properly get rid of the speaker and the mayor because, the, because of this vacancy. Right. The ANC retains this ward. That means that the ANC can replace, uh, now have a mayor in Siankuma, and the EFF will probably get the speaker position. So we see a change of government. ANC holds a seat, but a change of government because the EFF have switched sides. What was interesting in this uh, particular by-election, it's a small town of Schmitzdruff, a very rural ward. But in the area of Schmitzdruff, in this large ward, the EFF won, got the most votes there. And that's another good sign for the EFF in the Northern Cape. So the EFF will look at their result within the ward. They didn't win the ward. I'm talking about the voting district of Schmitzdruff. They carried that. They won a by-election in Pumalanga. A good sign for them. But the ANC will probably have the mayor here. There we go to Kai Kharib in the town of Kakamas where the Ukhrabi's national falls are. The ANC had to hold, retain the ward here to keep power. And they beat a local party and the DA in a tough contest. And they'll now retain the outright majority. And that's a good sign for the ANC in the Northern Cape. They want to show that they can continue to run these municipalities. What is quite significant here, Wayne, and you're saying is a characteristic of these by-elections, is how many people actually turned out to vote. Correct. Sometimes we can be dismissive of by-elections. If you can't take them seriously, no one shows up. Yeah. In most of the by-elections which took place yesterday, uh, yesterday, turnout exceeded that of the local government elections. That shows that people have the energy to vote. That shows that people are taking by-elections seriously, that they believe their vote can achieve something. Yeah. And uh, this is significant because we know that in the last national election and in the last local government election it was the lowest ever turnout in major elections. And that's concerning, that it showed that South Africans might be giving up, 
uh, of the idea of voting, the idea that your vote can achieve change. But in these by-elections, we are seeing energized turnout. It shows the political parties are switched on, and it shows voters are coming out in their droves. Yeah, that's what I wanted to come to, to say that kind of energy is their direct relationship also with the fact that there is quite a lot of energy in the political parties themselves to want to campaign this time around. Correct. The, the stakes are high. Also, by, this, is like a battle, this is like a test run for the major elections. Yeah. You want to make sure that your political parties know what to do on election day, know how to canvass, know how to uh, conduct yourselves around the, the voting stations. So this is a very important test run. And remember, we have a registration weekend coming up in a few weeks' time. That's going to be absolutely key to get new voters registered. So political parties are laser-focused right now on getting voters to the poll and getting voters registered. Yeah. Let's look at the Northwest there. Uh, it, I mean, it's not only the ANC that managed to retain some of its seats. It seems the Democratic Alliance, particularly in, in this province, managed to keep things almost as, 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 as similar pattern as what we saw in 2021. Let's begin in, in Ward 16. What's, what's the setting? Great. So... I'll do them together because they're right next to each other. So it's Ward 16 and Ward 17. Um, it's traditional DA stronghold. The suburbs of Clarkstorp, uh, which is the largest uh, town in the Matosana municipality. And here, basically, the DA held on to their wards, but also had slight increases in their majority. And I want the viewers to remember that before the 2021 local government elections, there was a period of time wherever the DA showed up and were defending in the ward, the Freedom Front would beat them, whether it had been Matlosana or J.B. Marx, Potch of Sturm, or, yeah. Ma or Mamusa, Schweizer, Reinecke. Wherever the Freedom Front met the DA, the DA would lose that war to the Freedom Front. And here you see in Matlosana, key municipality, the DA not still retaining the ward but increasing the majority. And I think what this means is they've clawed back some of the votes they lost uh, uh, off between 2019 and 2021, and that's a good sign for them on the road to 2024, that some of those voters who are disappointed to them are coming back. Um, they would have been slightly disappointed about the turnout, yeah. but I expect the turnout to be low in these by-elections because they're pretty safe DA seats, and the Freedom Front weren't able to eat into their majorities. So uh, by large, I mean, if you were to give analysis to that, would you say that previous... Um DA voter that would have left and went to the Freedom Front Plus a little bit more happier now with the policy direction that the party is taking. That seems to be the case in the Northwest Province. We also saw this in Ditze Bottler, uh, the Lichten, that troubled Lichtenberg municipality in December last year, that some of the Freedom Front voters came back to the DA. However, uh, we'll need to see whether the DA can do that in provinces like Gauteng, I'm thinking of Mohali City, where I think the Freedom Front has a good chance of making inroads, places like Chwane, and certainly municipalities in the Limpopo. Remember, the Freedom Front had a great election in, uh, in 2019. Yeah. We remember they were one of the big winners. Will they be able to replicate that in 2024? The results of these two wards suggest they've got to pull up their socks and work harder to make some inroads. Any, any major big by-elections that we are looking at in, in, in the recent future, particularly in some of the key metros? Correct. So in the next round of by-elections, and again I go back to the thing that's about here and the now and the road to 2024. Right. We are going to see a key ward in Etiquini, uh, which is obviously Durban, where the DA shocked the ANC. and The DA won that ward because there was an ANC... Uh, Someone who was linked to the ANC ran as an independent. And if that independent didn't run, the DA wouldn't have won that ward. So I think the ANC have a great opportunity of winning that ward back. And remember, the ANC's had a tough time in KwaZulu Natal. If they can win a ward in Etiquini, that helps them change the narrative. And then we're going to see some three, four horse tussles with independents and local parties in the ANC and the EFF in one, and then another one, an independent the Freedom Front, the ANC, and the DA. So it's going to be a fascinating round of by-elections in two weeks' time. How much is this concept of, 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 of uh, floor crossing or deflecting to other parties 
playing in, 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 in these numbers today? Because previously we would see a season of full of crossing where we would see quite a lot of that. It, it's not happening as, 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 as regularly as it used to happen before. It's seeming people are more stable now, not defecting as, as much. But how much is it playing out in terms of these numbers that we see? It's, it's, it's not a major factor. Yeah. Uh, we've seen it with the Patriotic Alliance. It's a good way of them uh, achieving growth, that they do attract counselors or candidates from other political, from other political parties. But it's, not, um, it's, it's slowed down a lot. I mean, uh, there are going to be some by-elections coming up where Action SA is going to be contesting against the DA, but though... Those aren't councillors defecting to Action SA per se. So it's not, not a factor right now. Remember the legislation changed. There was a time in Parliament, if you remember, I think in the Mbeki era, where uh, politicians were defecting en masse to yeah. political parties, yeah, certainly indeed. the ANC. Yeah. And it's less of a factor today. Independence, we are, of course, having independence already playing a, a significant role within local government space and um, with uh, the uh, uh, Electoral Amendment Act it, it is hoped that independence will play even a bigger role uh, within the national as well as the provincial space are we, are we seeing that kind of major role being played out in these by-elections? Yeah, there was an independent candidate in the Siankuma uh, by-election in rural northern Cape yesterday near Douglas that candidate it was a three-horse race. They got over 20% of the vote. But I, I think the people backing that particular candidate thought they were going to do a bit better. They had links to the ANC, etc. So it's hard. Uh, so it's, it's very, very hard. I mean, the most, uh, the independent who I think will make the biggest splash at this stage in the elections next is someone like Zaki Ahmad, the famous uh, activist and founder of Treatment Action Campaign is relatively well known in Cape Town. Right. Uh, a party like Good, I think, is chan um, has, ch uh, has some challenges right now. Maybe he'll attract some of their voters. He's well known in Cape Town. He's, got, uh, he can, he's an activist. He can build uh, branches, networks. But I can't think of any other independent at this very hour who is going to shake up the elections next year. But I, I like being surprised, like the EFF did it last night in the small town of Brayton, and I'm sure there are going to be many surprises between now and election night. When you sit at, at, at home and you're looking at your graphs there, <laughs> amongst the other things that you do, Wayne, but I'm sure you like to look at this and, and see the patterns of, 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 of growth. Where are you seeing most growth? So I think the IFP in KwaZulu-Natal is a real story. Um, they not just taking votes from the ANC, they're also taking votes from the EFF, and this is something to watch. I think that they can be a big uh, success story uh, in the 2024 elections. And I think there's a key thing here. Um, I listen to a lot of politicians speak on television, on the radio, watch them in the rallies, and I think the thing with the IFP is they focused. The thing with the Patriotic Alliance is another party, as they show, they've just won a by-election in Kimberley, they've won a by-election in George, they are also focused, and I think that's going to be key. Political parties who know where their voters are, who are focused on their voters, have the opportunity to do well in the next election. But also, we've got so many new parties running for the first time in a national election. Action SA, Rise in Zanzi, Build One South Africa, and a whole host of new parties. It's going to be interesting to see how they can capture the hearts and minds and imagination of South Africans in the coming months. I saw something and I thought I should pick your brain on because I found it quite interesting. In fact, I kept asking myself, why would we do that? Um, the, the, what, what do they call themselves? I forget the name, but they were supposed to be a moonshot pact. But they, yes. they, they ended multi up. Multi-party multi charter. Multi-party charter, yeah. That's, they went on a plane and went, I think it's Germany, where, yes, where, 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 where they went to see how coalitions are, are, are being run. Why would they do that? I mean, is, is there no other model that they could possibly look at? Well, coalitions have been a major challenge in South Africa on a local government level. Just a reminder that in all of our nine provinces right now, there, there's no coalition. It's the ANC runs eight, eight, of the, eight provinces and the DA runs one province. Yeah. But on our metros and our smaller municipalities, often there are one or two success stories, but often coalitions have been found wanting. And that... that makes sense that political parties across the board are traveling to other countries where they've had success of elections, uh, co sorry, of coalitions. There's a maturity around coalitions because that's going to be key. 
Um, even though I think South Africans do not enjoy living under coalitions, I'm very sure that we're going to have some provinces under coalition governments, uh, in, certainly on a provincial level, even possibly on a national level, in 2024. So you go into these countries to see how do you do a good agreement, how do you make sure that all sides of the coalition can benefit, and it makes sense that political parties are doing it. Someone would say, but I'm sure conditions are completely different in Germany as compared to conditions here in South Africa, where, I mean, you look at, at, at South Africa, that, that ballot paper is going to be quite low, it's going to be going all the way to, to the floor where it's easier if it's lesser parties uh, forming those coalitions. Correct. So Germany, by the way, they have a threshold, I think it's 10% or it's over 5%, which is a significant number. Remember in South Africa to get a seat ostensibly 0.25%. Um, so in Germany it's certainly over 5%, the number escapes you for now. That means that there are very few parties, as you say, um, who are going to make it over the threshold and get into the, parla into the Bundestag, into the parliament. Yeah. That is going to be different in South Africa. Where, and that's one of the things. Do we have to start looking at a threshold? Is it going to be too chaotic uh, with coalitions? I think there's a strong chance that if the ANC falls under 50%, and in order for it to fall under 50%, you're going to have to see uh, more results like we saw in Musikalikwa Musi yesterday, um, the ANC would look for tiny parties who wouldn't ordinarily qualify for that German-type threshold. So it's going to be fascinating to look at. Wayne, appreciate your time as always, and uh, thank you for coming on and uh, your intervention here. Political and elections analyst, Wayne Sussman.